Hi, this is Kylie Koo. So, if you'd like to see how I made these very simple, straightforward word embellishments, keep watching. This week in the Mixed Media Emporium, I'm going back to the October prompt of Paper Mania, week two, making paper embellishments, because I missed that one uh, because of circumstances at the time. But here's what you'll need to make these. Any little scraps of paper. I'm just using little pieces of card that I'd put some swatches on. You could use pattern paper if you wanted. I'm also going to use some old dictionary pages and just some brown paper that came in packaging recently. I've also got some words that I printed off. I keep these just in a file on my computer, print them off whenever I need them. Or you could of course stamp some. Today I'm going to use some glue stick and also a round punch. You could use any type of punch or you could just draw around a coin or something and cut them out. This punch is, I think it's about one inch. A pair of scissors, I've got some ink and I've got a little stamp just to put on the back of my little embellishments because some of these could be used as little kind of dangling charms. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm literally just going to stick these little bits of paper, little bits of the, the kind of thicker paper down onto the dictionary pages. And I'll do the same with the brown paper in a minute. So just using a glue stick, a wet glue might stick even better for the longer term, but meantime, this will be fine. Now you see on those pieces of paper, I'd been swatching something in the past, trying something out. That's I think a water-based pen, it might run a little bit, so, you know, if you're using scraps like that, you just need to watch out for that kind of thing. Just using my scissors, you could use a bone folder, just to press that down to make sure it's properly adhered. I'm going to put it to the side, and I'm going to do exactly the same with this brown paper. Now, this paper is actually quite nice and thick. It's kind of thicker than some of the stuff that you get in the packages now, so, of course, I'm keeping it all, and we'll be using it for different projects in the weeks and months ahead. So just using, you know, little scraps there, fitting them in as best I can. And then again, I'll just go over the top of that with the scissors just to make sure that the two are bonded tight together. So yes, I thought I'd take a break from the kind of holiday prep this week. And as I say, I wanted to go back and do this particular prompt because I'd missed it uh, back in October. So this was a good opportunity, having that kind of wild card do any prompt this month. A good opportunity to go back and pick that up. Now, I'm not going to be too pernickety there. I'm just going to roughly tear off where the uh, cardboard, where the thicker card ends. And I'll just be careful when I'm punching out to make sure that I punch right into the card. So doing the exact same again, just getting that down, the bit of paper now down and onto the back of the card. Because I want this so that if it was a kind of dangle on a journal, if it turned round, then there's something of interest on the back as well. Here we go. Just putting that down too. And I'll do the exact same with the piece with the brown paper. And of course you could put brown paper on one side and you could put dictionary paper, you could use newspaper, you could use yellow pages, you could use flyers, anything with a bit of interest. Just put that inside my plastic folder, just because of some glue in the top, and just pressing it down that way again, just making sure that all the papers are bonded nicely together. And I can feel there where the card ends, so I know where I want to punch. But you could actually cut that off if you wanted. So just going in now, they're quite thick because there's various layers of paper, so just going in and punching them out. Now, because the brown paper was really quite thick and sturdy, I really had to press hard to get this out. But there we go. I've got them all punched out now. Those pieces put to the side. I will probably keep them to use in something else in future. Now, I'm just going to start to cut out my words. So, 
These were 14, size 14 in terms of the font. Could make them smaller and I would have got some of the longer ones to fit on, but I just wanted to print off the size that I had today. Now that I've cut the words out, I'm just going to go round all my little rings with that sepia ink. Depending on the paper you use, it can start to kind of bleed into it a little bit. I don't mind that. If you've followed me for a long time, you know that I quite like things to look a little bit grungy. But if you didn't want it to do that kind of bleed, then all you would need to do is use less ink and perhaps use one of the kind of blending tools. So, just getting a word now. They're quite small by this point, so I'm just being careful. Now, I've got a bit of ink on my fingers, that will transfer on. I don't mind that. Again, you know, uh, it's just one of those things that adds a wee bit of background interest to it, so it's not totally flat and white. This page was actually printed on an inkjet printer. What I might have done was to go over it with some ink, but I didn't want to do that because I didn't want the words to, to actually bleed. I didn't want the writing on that to bleed. So just showing you how I'm putting that carefully in place. I want to move that down a little bit. You could centre it, you can move it to the bottom, depending on whether or not there was anything else you wanted to do with these. And I will do something with them towards the end. And just pushing that down to make sure it's fully adhered. So I'm now going to put the other words on the rest just off camera. I've got them all done now. All I'm doing now is to take an ordinary biro pen, ballpoint pen, and I'm just going to go round the words. I didn't want to go round them with the ink beforehand. One, because they're small, and two, it would probably have bled into that type of paper as well. So I'm just going to go round them, not again trying to make this particularly neat. I quite like sketchy, so just doing that. And I'll just go round it a few times. And again, that just helps it stand out a bit. So I'll now do that to the rest of them. So I've actually taken out some black ink because the uh, sepia was starting to to run down a bit and all I'm going to do is to start to put this little stamp on the back. I always find some of these wooden stamps a little bit more difficult to stamp with. They don't seem to, you can't apply the same level of pressure as you seem to be able to do with the kind of clear ones. But there they are, they're done. And I think that just lifts the back of them a little bit. So moving on, I'm now going to you could keep them simply like this if you wanted, but I'm just going to show you how you can just kind of liven them up a bit more. So just going to punch a hole and put one of the little eyelets in. Because this just means that I can then attach them to other things. Now, of course, you don't need eyelets. You could just punch a hole in them. And that's all I'm doing. I always find this a bit fiddly to do on camera because my tendency is to want to look at it closely, uh, just to get it in place. So it can be hard just to, to get it on the, in the shot as well. But there we go, that's it done. So even with just that small one inch circle, I was able to, to get that in. So I've got some of these bolt pins you could simply put a split ring on it or something like that. Anything where you can then hang them. You could even just put a piece of embroidery thread or a piece of chain through them. So just pulled out this little nature journal that I made earlier in the year. Not really done anything more with that, but this is the type of thing that could be put on here. Now, that cover is a thick cotton rag paper, caddy paper, and the pin wouldn't push through it. So in a moment, I'll just punch a little hole to... Uh... So I'll just use the, the smaller hole in my punch now. Just going to punch that in. I just want to let you see how you can use this type of thing. 
and then I'll just attach it. And in a moment you'll see that one can also be attached to where I've sewn the signature in. And that could be done anywhere through the book. So difficult to see where my sewn in signature is there just because of the colour of the thread but I'll show you in a moment because I'll just thread it through just using the exact same type of bulb. I find these bulb pins quite handy because you could also put a little charm onto this as well. And then of course you could use others to go anywhere within the book. They could be stuck on, they could be added to tags, they could just be glued down one side and it could be used to tuck things in, so a little tuck spot. So Nina will also have a video this week and I'll link that below, but I'll also link another video with word embellishments here. If you like this, please do hit the thumbs up to let YouTube know that you do like this type of content. Thanks for watching, bye for now.